Hello everyone, this is Jack. Well, in this video, I'm going to cover 10 types of squash that you must grow and cook with. And I'm not covering zucchini and yellow crookneck squash, none of that. They are really bland as compared to the flavor of these. So first, I'm going to list all of these, and then I'm going to go over what they look like, the properties of these squash, and then I'm going to take them indoors, cook with them, and share the taste with you as well. So let's get started. For each squash, I'll be covering the texture, whether it's crisp, coarse, smooth, or buttery. I'll be covering flavor tones such as earthy and nutty and sweetness on the scale of one to 10, one being low and 10 being the highest. The best time to plant all of these different varieties of squashes is April and May. You can start the seeds of these squash all the way up till the end of June. You can either start the seeds inside just two weeks before your last frost date or you can plant the seeds directly outside in your garden right after the last frost. I grew all of these squash and I'm baking them and getting them ready for the taste test as well. Number one, red curry squash. Now red curry squash has a thick orange skin and is one of the winter squashes. Red curry squash takes about four months from seed to harvest. The red curry squash weighs from one pound to up to two pounds, which is about a half a kilo to a kilo. Similar to the outside skin color, the inside of the red curry squash is also orange in color. And now, let's give it a try. Mmm, very buttery, earthy, and also nutty. And a smooth, has a very nutty flavor, similar to like chestnut. Number two, silver bell squash. And they derive their name from their shape and their color. The silver bell squash has this greenish grayish tint to it. And they can weigh from half a pound to up to three pounds, which is half a kilogram to one and a half kilograms. These silver bells are really good producer. I have four vines and they are producing about 30 silver bell squash. While the outside color is silverish, the inside is yellow to light orange. And now let's try the silver bell squash. The silver bell looks delicious. Mm. Very smooth, very buttery. At the end, you have a little bit of a kick. It's like an aftertaste. It might be really good in soup or savory dishes. Number three, Kamo Kamo squash, which is also sometimes known as Kumi Kumi squash as well. The Kamo Kamo squash can be eaten green or it can be let to cure and ripen on the vine. And when it ripens, it turns into yellow color with green stripes. The Kamo Kamo squash can weigh two to four pounds, which is one to two kilograms. And it is part of the staple diet of Maori people in New Zealand. However, it's not originated in New Zealand. It was brought over by European settlers into New Zealand and quickly became the favorite of Maori people there. The Kamo Kamo squash can be pretty tough and hard to cut. The inside is light yellow in color. And now let's give it a try. More rigid, has a bite to it. Very earthy. Not too sweet and not nearly nutty as well. Number four, the delicata squash. It is also known as peanut squash, bohemian squash, or even sweet potato squash as well. The delicata squash can be elongated or round, and they are about three inches wide and six inches long. And they have this yellow hue and green stripes running on them. The delicata squash is light yellow from the inside. And now let's give it a try. Delicata is much denser. Very earthy, very nutty. Coarse kind of flavor as well. It's not very smooth. It has a neutral kind of sweetness. Not very sweet, it's not bitter either. It's just right in the middle. Wait a minute, I said the same thing about another squash, the red curry squash. Yes, delicata and red curry do taste very similar, but the red curry has more of a nutty flavor than delicata does. Number five, subgetti squash. It's pale ivory to light yellow in skin color. This is one of the go-to squashes to make subgetti that's free of carbs because the inside comes out like subgetti. In case you're wondering why all my vines are just brown and yellow and they just dying, and that's because they are. It's end of the season, we're expecting frost tomorrow. I'm just leaving all of this squash on the vine so they harden up so I can store them for much longer inside the garage in a cool, dark and dry place. And they will store three to six months. So it's end of the season and the time is up for all of these vines and that's why they are looking like that. Well, check out the size of this spaghetti squash. Compare this to my head. This is nine pounds, which is about four kilograms. This is six pounds, which is about two and a half kilograms. Both the outside and inside of the spaghetti squash is pale yellow in color. And now let's give it a try. The spaghetti squash is kind of stringy, so let's taste it. 
very mild, kind of neutral flavor. Crispy, much crisper than other squash that I've had. Number six, burner squash, and it's also one of the most common squash as well. It's long and oblong in shape and light brown in color. Well, look at the size of this burner squash. Compare it to my head. This is about 5.5 pounds, which is a little over two kilos. This one is four pounds, which is right about two kilos. While the outside is pale brown, the inside is orange in color. And now let's try the burner squash. Also has a little bite to it, not as much as the camo camo squash. Resembles more like a, a sweet potato. It's very sweet, very buttery, very smooth. It's similar to eating a sweet potato or a yam. Number seven, honey nut squash. Now, honey nut squash is bred between burner squash and butter cup squash, and it looks very much like butter nut squash. The honey nut squash is darker, and usually they're about half the size of burner squash, and they're usually sweeter than the butter nut squash. While it does look like butter nut squash and much smaller, the inside of honey nut squash is much brighter orange than butter nut squash. And now, let's give it a try. Honey nut is very sweet. It's much sweeter than butternut. Much lighter than butternut as well. Butternut is a little bit more denser. You get half the amount of squash from honey nut as you would get from butternut. But honey nut is much sweeter and much fluffier as compared to butternut. Here is honey nut and butternut side by side. As you can see, honey nut is much more orange than butternut and it looks much more richer. So it depends on what you want to do. If you want to make soup and you don't like your soup too sweet, butternut is the way to go. But if you like a sweeter kind of squash, you might like honey nut. Now I'm not adding any salt, pepper, or anything else on these squashes. I'm just tasting the squash itself. But if you put butter, if you put salt and other things, other spices on them, they will taste much better. Number eight acorn squash, which is dark green in color. And the name is due to the shape of the squash, which resembles an acorn. The acorn squash are about one to two pounds, which is about a half a kilo to a kilo. While the outside is dark green, the inside is light yellow in color. And now let's give it a try. Hmm. Very coarse kind of texture. Very nutty flavor, earthy flavor. Not sweet at all. Number nine buttercup squash. It's round in shape and green in color and is supposed to have a much more buttery texture than any other squash. Well, these Burgess Burger squash are really good producers that we've been eating them all summer long and they're really good sauteed with some butter. Very smooth, very buttery, mildly sweet, very little bit of hint of sweetness. Number 10, the Indian long squash or also another variety, the Indian of long squash. They are very similar with a little distinction in the shape. This is the soft squash variety and it does not store for much longer. If you need to store it for longer, you must refrigerate it and it will keep in the refrigerator for up to two weeks. The Indian squash is best cooked fresh. Well, I have some small Indian squash growing right here, but next to them is growing this behemoth. Oh, let me take it out. Let me show you guys. Wow, look at the size of this one. Usually you wanna eat the Indian squash when they're small and tender. I'm just letting these grow so that they can produce seed. I can save them over the winter to take the seeds out of them to plant next year. While the outside is light green in color, the inside is white and fluffy. Now I had to boil this one because if you bake it, it might disintegrate completely. So you will actually stir fry this or cook it on a cooktop and it turns out really well. You know, it makes a really good gravy and it actually holds up its uh, texture as well if you don't overdo it. If you overdo it, it will totally disintegrate it. So let's try this one. Very airy, fluffy, very neutral, not bitter, not sweet. It's very soft and squishy and will go really well with spicy dishes as well. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you can enjoy all of these different types of squash and I'll see you in another video.